Well, hello, hello. How you doing? How you doing? This is the S. Anthony Says Podcast. This is the S. Anthony Thomas, and this is episode number three, one, four, three, fourteen. Hello, Bastard Army. Hello. How are you doing? How are you doing? Thank you very, very much for coming back to listen to the S. Anthony Says Podcast. I appreciate it. We are going to have a good time, but we always do, and I think you know that, you bastards. Folks, uh, let's just get right into it. I was going to give some kind of preamble, like a, but let's just, let's just get right to it. Okay. We know what everybody's talking about and everybody, everybody that I ran into all day yesterday, all day today, you know, you know, sometimes people initiate conversation about the weather, you know, they'll try to talk about what's happening in the moment if something is happening at the location where you are. And, but this time everybody that initiated conversation with me, talked about exactly the same thing and what was that thing it's the thing the world's talking about right now it's conor mcgregor and a bunch of his boys coming from ireland busting into the stadium and attacking a bus everybody's talking about it everybody's got an opinion on what the deal is and you know what so do i damn it now from what we know as of the recording of this what happened is one of Connor's close friends got confronted by a fighting rival and Connor thought of it as disrespectful and he decided he wanted some retribution. So he got a bunch of his boys and I mean a bunch of his boys got on a plane from his homeland, flew to New York, busted into the damn stadium and attempted to whip the buttocks of the people that he was mad at who happened to be on the bus. Unfortunately, there were other people on the bus that had nothing to do with what he was angry about, but it didn't matter. He decided to attack the bus with his boys, smashing windows and all of that kind of crap and trying to whoop the ass of people and all of that kind of crap. And everybody knows what happens. Sometimes when you have a group of boys and they're like your family, you want to defend them i've actually been in situations similar to that where someone tries to attack one of my boys now i'm not i mean i can criticize them for breaking the window i can criticize them for attacking people i can criticize them for for attacking people that you know that had nothing to do with it and i feel like a bit of a hypocrite in a way because i know but but in my situation someone was attacking my friend when i was right there so i mean i'll be honest with you if somebody's attacking my friend when i'm right there and i have the ability to whoop the ass of the person who's attacking my friend i'm going to whoop that person's ass sorry okay well you know what i'm saying I mean, I mean i've been in that situation i've been in bars where somebody's attacking a friend of mine and i, well, I rolled up on them and i whooped that person's ass I've been in situations where I was in the, I was hanging out with my lady at the time and these two guys were being a little rude and I whooped their asses. And I, I'm not I'm not some tough guy. I can take care of myself, but I'm not some tough guy. But there are times there are times when the person does some things when you know that talking just won't get it done. You can't stop and say, hey, don't do that. I'm upset that you did that. Sometimes. Whooping a person's ass is something that you feel like you need to do. And in the situations where I whooped people's asses, I was actually helping a friend who was getting his ass whooped or a lady who was getting accosted. And I don't feel bad for whooping these people's asses. The people whose asses I whooped deserve to have their asses whipped. Now, if something happened to my friend and he didn't get his ass whooped, would I fly across the ocean with a, with a bunch of other friends and then attack the other person in a, in a parking lot? No. Would I throw anything through a glass window? No. And you have to think about you have the thing is a lot of times people get emotionally uh, oh, and they just get too emotional in situations and what do they do? They act irrationally. They act irrationally. They do dumb stuff. But you know when it's extra dumb? When you have a lot to lose. Conor McGregor probably had 30, 40 million dollars in the bank before the Floyd Mayweather fight. Then you add another 100 million on top of it. If you've got 140 million dollars, that means anytime you do anything to anybody, you could get sued. Right? As soon as you have that kind of money and everybody knows you have that kind of money, you are a damn target for everything. 
Trust me, you get sued all the time. That's why rich people have lawyers on retainer, because they know even when they didn't do anything wrong, they're going to be people trying to sue their punk asses because they got money in those punk asses want some of your punk ass money. That's the way of the world, unfortunately. Right. If you're a famous person, you could be sitting down minding your own business in a place and somebody could walk by, turn back to look at you and get a sore neck from turning the neck so fast. And all of a sudden you see it on the news the next night. Famous person X is now being sued by fan XY because, well, he has whiplash from turning his head so fast that he feels that the star should have known that they're such a famous person that they should not have sat by the window. And he, well, I was walking by and I saw the really famous person I'm a big fan of in the window and I turned my head really fast and I turned my head so fast I got a neck problem. And I think that because I turned my head really fast that it's just, I think that I should be at least worth three million because, I mean, if he did, if he he knows how famous he is and he should have been if he's going to sit by the window he should have sat with his back to the public because obviously if he's if he's that famous and he's sitting by the window he must know that people are going to want to look at him and if he's going to want to he knows people are going to want to look at him he knows that people are going to want to turn their head and if a person turns their head too fast they're going to get whiplash and in fact I think he sat there with the specific purpose of causing as many people to have as much whiplash as possible he knows a lot of tourists walk by that window but he sat there anyway I just want to say right now I'm hoping if there's anybody else out there there who got whiplash looking at famous person X in the window. I would like you to join me in a class action lawsuit and we're now going to sue for 80 million because we know he's worth 700 billion. So we now want to get a little bit of that money for this bullshit and that they get back and you know I'm I'm only exaggerating a little bit. If you're a famous person, you get in fight with somebody in the street. You already know automatically any famous person knows automatically minimum, 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 minimum. You crack somebody in the face with your fist. If they don't hit the ground, if they're not hurt too bad, minimum, you're going to be paying two hundred and fifty thousand dollars plus lawyer's fees oh yeah a regular person like me that doesn't have any kind of money like that i just get arrested okay i get sued i lose you lose your car you lose your house or you wind up having to make payments to this person for a long period of time or you go to jail or some crap like that but if you're famous two hundred and fifty thousand dollars minimum oh you know what i'm talking about what if the person falls down and hits their head on the ground oh now ching 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 the money starts to go up oh yes it does but when you do something dumb like smash out some windows when there's a bunch of cameras around, windows when there's a, a whole bus full of people all carrying cell, phone, cell phones and recording, windows when everybody's looking right at you on high definition film, you're begging, begging, begging to get your punk ass sued. I am not a rich person. I'm just a regular nine to five person, just like everybody else. Right. Well, I don't actually go to a nine to five job, but you get the point. And, and, and so what I'm saying is even I, who's not rich at all, I know not to crack somebody. Do I want to punch people in the mouth every once in a while? Sure. Have I been in a situation where somebody did something to a friend of mine recently and I wanted to slap the crap out of him? Sure. But I know better than that. This is a big story, my friends. Everywhere I went, everywhere I went, people were bringing up Conor McGregor, this Conor McGregor, that kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of. I'm walking down the street. Right? I'm minding my own business. I'm trying to go get a cup of coffee. I walk by this homeless guy. He's sitting outside the coffee shop on the ground. I'm feeling sorry for him. As I approach the coffee shop, I see him and I kind of turn to the side a little bit and I put a little money in my left pocket because I'm going to give him some bread. You don't want to open your wallet in front of people. I mean, like I got a lot of money in there, but this guy might be a lot of money. And the last thing I want to do is open up my wallet and there's $24 in there. And this is, looks like this looks like Fort Knox to this guy. And I wind up getting my ass whipped by some dude who don't look like he can whoop ass, but it's a turn. Turns out he's got that I've been hungry for three days strength and he whoops your ass and takes your money and you wind up having to go to the hospital with your ass whipped all over 24 dollars. You probably would have given his punk ass in the first place if he knew he could whip your ass. Anyway, so I'm walking past this guy and I see the guy sitting there and I'm looking at the guy. And, I, and then now as, as I get closer to him, I realize he doesn't have that ass whipped vibe to him at all. He just looks like a guy who's had a hard life, you know. The kind of guy you feel sorry for, but you don't pity because you don't want to insult them by being, you know, because sometimes when people hand people, homeless people some money, they kind of throw it off to the side, like, take that and die, bastard. Take that scum. Take that. But I don't want to do that. I'm not going to be that guy. I see this guy sitting there. He's laying there. I put two bucks in my left pocket. I'm about to hand this guy the money. Excuse me, sir. Yes. 
I was wondering, you know, I haven't eaten in a while, and I was wondering if you could spare some change, and you know that way I can get this big and get the thing and some food and get the food and thing and thing and the food. Said, you know what, buddy, I'm about to go into this donut shop. You want me to bring you something out? No, no, no. I just want, I just want to get to the money. I'll, I'll get it myself, you know, because I might, I might go someplace else. Not a problem, dude. I pulled the two dollars out of my wallet. I'm sorry, out of my left pocket. I hand it to him, and I'm looking him right in the eyes. I said, hey, man, take care, man. Here you go, man. Take care of yourself. Thank you, man. And as I'm walking over, I'm about to walk in there. He says, hey, man, one more thing. And I go, yes. And I'm thinking he's going to ask for more money, and I'm thinking, dude, I gave you two bucks. And I was like, you know what? If he, yeah, I might give him another buck. What the hell? You know what I mean? But I, I'll, 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 I'm going to do the thing where I'm going to say, you know, I'll take I'll get, you. know, I'll give you another buck when I come out. I don't, you know, like I said, I don't want like, nobody looking at the $23 in my wallet. And, uh, he goes, no, I don't want any more money. You, you, you gave me, cause everybody else said, give me a recorder and stuff. You gave me $2. I'm going to thank you for that. But I also want to thank you, man. For what? For, you know, I mean, a lot of people like look through me and they don't treat me like a human being. You know, if they do give me some money, a lot of guys just like throw it on the ground or like drop it in my hand or like, you know, they're like, go, oh, hey, 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 while they're not even looking at me, just kind of throw it towards me, you know, or they, or they say something smart or they don't even look at me and I'm invisible to them, but you didn't do that. You looked at me. Uh, you know, it's kind of, I mean, it, it, it might not seem like a big thing to you, but when somebody looks at you like a human being, like you mean something, even though it's just a little bit of something, it does it, it's almost as, as it's almost as important as the money. I said, "Oh, if it's as important as the money. How would I just look at you for another minute? You give me them two dollars back?" <laughs> no, man, come on, man, you clowning me? <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm not gonna take the money back. He said, "I know, man, but look, I just want to say that, uh, uh, thanks, man." I said, oh, "No problem, brother. You know, I, I'm, I'm trying to walk away again." One more thing, man. Um, you hear about that Conor McGregor thing, man? That dude crazy, man. What? Conor McGregor, man, you know, the fighter Conor McGregor. I don't even know nothing about it because I'm out, you know, I live out in the street and everything, but the only reason I knew about it is, well, I may, I make a pillow out of, out of newspapers, right? So I was laying on the thing that and I was, I was rolling over to go to sleep and I look and I saw a picture of this dude and I said, that's the new Conor McGregor, right? So I unrolled my, my pillow and I pull out the piece of paper and I over, open it up and I'm like, this dude did what? He did what? He bum rushed a bunch of people at the, at the, the, the bus station. Damn, man, I live in the streets and I, I make some bad decisions, but even I know better than that kind of crap. I would never do something like that. He must be crazy, man. Shoot, he must be crazy, man. If I had that kind of money, ain't no way in the world I'm going to be busting. And it was 16 minutes of that as, I'm, as he follows me into the donut shop. I'm going, damn, even homeless people that don't have televisions and live in the streets are talking about Conor McGregor. Good Lord. Man, that's a big ass story. Later on that day, I'm going to another place to get something because I'm going to go someplace else. And the guy next to me, the guy next to me is staring at me. He's staring at me. And I don't know why he's staring at me. He's staring at me as I'm making my order. He's staring at me. I'm looking over at him and he's looking at me and I'm looking at him and he's looking at me. And I'm going, why is this guy staring at me? Now I got to kind of keep my eye on him. I got him in my peripheral. I got him in my peripheral. I feel more uncomfortable with this guy than I got, than I did with the homeless guy early in the morning. Okay. But at least the homeless guy seemed like a, you know, it's like a nice guy down on his luck. This guy's a lot bigger than me and he's looking kind of weird at me. And I'm going, oh, get that. You know, when I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to get intact in here when I'm just trying to order some damn lunch. And then he's looking at me and I'm looking at him. And he's looking back at me and I'm looking at him and he's looking at me. Right. So I'm going to get him in the corner of my eye and I said, let me just order my lunch. I, I, obviously, he's not going to do anything. There's a, there's a bunch of people in here. And even if he does, I got just enough space to sidekick him in the nuts. So it doesn't really matter what happens. So I order my food. Right. And unfortunately, as you know, the crap I ordered for me was healthy. So, yay. But the person I was going to go meet, they didn't want anything healthy. They wanted some stuff fried on the grill. And one of the things they wanted fried on the grill was home fries. They wanted some home fries. They wanted home fries with onions. Home fries with onions and green peppers. So I start to order the home fries with onions and green peppers. Oh, oh, hi, you're back again. Oh, okay. Oh, hey, Mr. 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 S, what do you, what do you want? To, I go, okay, no, you got your stuff, okay? With the salad and the thing. And what, what, else, what, what, what else do you want to get? Yeah, I want to get home fries. You want to get home fries? But I thought, no, 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 they're not for me. They're not for me. Oh, cause you be eat healthy good. You be eating healthy. We go to eating healthy good. You, you get, you, you, you shrinking. You shrinking. Oh, thanks a lot. I'm glad. That's, yeah, the doctor said I lost it. Are oh, you looking, so you're going very good, very good. So what do, what do you want for your friend? Well, um, <clears throat> uh, they want to get, uh, bip whoop, bip whoop, blap, 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 and some home fries with, uh, fried onions, um, uh, and, and green peppers. And, um, and, uh, some cheese in there. Okay. So they want the, the, the home fries. The fried onions, the green pepper, and uh, the cheese. Okay, I, 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 and and they wanted fried hard too. Okay, fried hard. Okay, no problem. I take it from you. Okay, 
And she hands it to the guy and the guy begins. He's still chopping up my salad, but now he's, he's you know, he, he's pointing to the grill and he has his teenage son start to get the potatoes ready and all that kind of crap. You know, and then I could feel the, the guy that was next to me. You know, you ever see those movies where like a ghost is in the mood was in the in the movie and it's like 50 feet away from you. You turn away for a second and now it's two feet next to you. Or and then the ghost is right next to you. Well, all of a sudden, this jackass dude, the size of the rock who was on the other side of the counter is like right next to me. I couldn't even hear him moving. I don't know if he's a bat. I don't know if he has a dolly underneath the table. I don't know what the hell it is, but he got the close the distance real clack quick. And he's right there. And then and here's the bad part about it. He's standing right next to me just just an inch outside of what it would be uncomfortable for someone not who you don't know to stand next to you he's like an inch further than that distance and then he's just kind of looking at me he got this look on his face it's very very curious look on his face and i'm looking at him and i'm sitting there going is this this is the, this is the guy that stands next to you at the urinal and, and 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 isn't looking at your junk but looking junk adjacent you know what i'm saying you can't definitely say he's looking at your junk cuz you can't prove that he's looking at your junk but you get the feeling that he's moved his peripheral vision into the junk look range that's this guy he has that kind of look like he's looking at you that, that your junk at the urinal but you can't prove anything like i can't prove he's doing anything i can't prove he's doing anything wrong and as i said he's an inch outside of what would be the uncomfortable range for a person to be standing next to you that you don't know he's an inch outside that range another inch or so i'd look back and go what's up man but he's outside of that range by an inch he must have some kind of ruler how close to get to us anthony before he wants to get uncomfortable before he gets uncomfortable and asks me what's going on and another six inches i'm just going to drive my elbow into his throat so but but he's outside of an inch outside the comfort range with his punk ass so i got him in my peripheral you know the kind of peripheral he would probably use to look at somebody's junk i'm not saying he does that, but that's the kind of devil. Anyway, back to what I'm saying. And I kind of look over at him. He goes, what did you get, man? And I said, what? What did you get, man? What, what, what did I get? What? What did, you, what, did, what, did, what did you just order there, man? What did I order? What? How do you answer a question like that? You know, because there's a part of you that's like, why the hell do you want to know what I ordered, bro? You ain't eating it. Get the hell out of my face. But I didn't want to say that because, as I said, he's about the size of the rock. I mean, I I can handle myself, but, I, I you know, come on, let's keep it real here. You know what I'm saying? What did you get there, man? I'm like, let me just answer this. Drug. It's not like he's going to touch my food. And I told him what I ordered. No, 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 not that. I heard about the salad. No, 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 no. I will remember the whoop de whoop de whoop de whoop. No, 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 not that. That's not that. No, 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 not that. And um, uh, the last thing was a uh, home fries. Home fries. That's right. That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. Home fries. Okay. Yeah, I got um, home fries with fried onions. Fried onions, okay. Yeah, uh, home fries with fried onions and green peppers. Green peppers, okay. Yeah, and uh, home home fries and, 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 and cheese. Cheese. Like yeah, yeah, just cheese. I don't think you. I never even thought about that, man. Right? I mean, my wife eats all sorts of crazy stuff. But 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 I never had no, no, nobody ever put no home fries, no home fries with no cheese. Okay, that's all right. It's interesting. Uh, but, but is that good? I mean, I, I'm not eating it, but I mean, I can't imagine that. You know, I mean, cheese. I mean, I don't eat a lot of cheese anymore. But when I eat cheese all the time, I mean, let's keep it real. If you put cheese on a dead cat, most people will eat it. <laughs> dead cat. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, so there you go. That's what it was. Okay, excuse me, miss. Yes, what do you want? What did he, what did he just order? Oh, he had a salad. No, no, not the salad. Oh, he got the whoopty whoop de blip blip blip. No, not the whoopty whoop de blip blip blip. The thing, the last thing with home fries. Oh, he got home fries. They fried onions. I got the uh, green pepper sushi with the cheese. I would like that. I would like the green pepper with the cheese. Okay, I get it for you. Okay, great. Hey, man, you gave me a good idea, man. Okay, good. I'm glad I could help, I guess. Not about man, because this was good eating, man. Man, I didn't get uh, I just I need some good eating, I need some on my stomach, man. I was drinking last night. Now he's telling me his story. I was drinking last night when I was watching the fights. Okay, good. It was some good fights. You went to the UFC last night? And he he brought up the UFC and I was still thinking about the UFC and I made the mistake of you know, I was like, Why did I engage in this? Because I know and I go, Yeah, I watched it was pretty some good pretty good fights. You know, I like the you know, the Rose Nominunis uh 
you want to you know, check fight. Yeah, and now all of a sudden we started talking about UFC fights and we started talking about all this kind of stuff. And then it comes up, Conor McGregor, man. And then we go through the whole Conor McGregor thing again. And as it turns out, as we're talking, as it turns out, even though the way the guy talks is really, really annoying, we actually had a very, very pleasant conversation. I enjoyed the conversation that we had. You know, it was actually a lot of fun talking to this cat. Okay, buddy. I got my stuff. All right, man. Take care of yourself. All right, man. Take care of yourself, man. Okay. All right, man. I, I actually, I didn't mean to imitate him when I was leaving. I wasn't trying to mock him. I was like, you know how sometimes you're around people and they have habits that kind of rub off on you and all of a sudden you start doing it. You know, like, you know, like uh, when you have a bunch of guys hanging around you and they start picking up your phrases and you start picking up their phrases and you start sounding like them and they start sounding like you. That's why sometimes you see a bunch of friends that are nothing alike in the beginning, all kind of turn into the same dude. <laughs> right. You know, I had friends of mine uh, like really. And, and this is this is a bad way to put this. But it's this. But it's like these. I have friends of all ethnicities, but I have some friends that are like, you know, you know, when you watch like old 70s sitcoms like uh, Sanford and Son or if you watch Def Comedy Jam and they always have the white guy that is so unbelievably unhip that the black guy has to interpret slang for him. Like when you would watch Sanford and Son and then the white guy would go, all right, it's time for us to chop. No, man, it's split, not chop, split. You know that? <laughs> And you know, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I'll tell you right now, I agree with you guys. Right off. No, man, it's right on, bro. It's right on. It, that kind of thing. And I used to laugh at those shows as a kid because those shows came on when I was a little boy. As I became older, I actually had some friends. A lot of my friends are, 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 are white guys. And I swear to goodness, it was, it was just like that. And they were at my house one time and I was trying to explain to them, uh, how, why I was laughing sometimes when they would, you know, mess up slang words, uh, that they, they had, they had actually broken into the mainstream. It's not like it was like brand new hip hop phrases that just started because of a rap song that's still in the charts. I'm talking about just the kind of stuff that everybody uses, right? And they still didn't understand them. So no big deal. So one time we're at the house and we're chilling and, uh, I turn on, by the way, they, they didn't know what chilling men either. And I was watching, uh, Sanford and Son and I saw Smitty and Hoppy, who were the two people I use in the example that I just gave you. Smitty and Hoppy were the, you know, were the cops, right? And so, and I'm going, okay, that's us right there. What, the cops? Yes, that's us. What do you mean? Just keep watching. Okay, Mr. Sanford, it's really great that we're here now. And, uh, all right. I'll tell you right now. That guy who stole your silverware is a jive chicken. No, that's jive turkey, man. (laughs) (coughs) Right? So he sees this and he laughs his ass off because he knows exactly what I'm talking about. He goes, oh, my God, am I that bad? I said, no, it's not good or bad. It's that that's how you sounded when we became friends 15, 20 years ago, that's what you sounded like. You know, you don't sound like that now, but that's what you sounded like. Um, so <laughs> now I just told you guys this because I just was trying to explain why for like the next 12 hours I was going, man, after I was around that guy, because normally I'm the one that rubs off on other people, but somehow that guy's you know, the way that guy talked kind of rubbed off on for me me, and me for a while. I was actually amusing myself by talking like that for a while. And then I had to explain to people, they're like, why are you talking like that? And then I would have to tell them the whole story about why I was going, man, because of the guy at the place. That, that's one of the, God, I like to tell weird long ass stories. Anyway, so as it turns out, like I said, the Conor McGregor story that everybody was talking about kind of permeated my entire day. It just everything that I did every day, oh, the whole day, it kept coming up. It kept coming up and it kept coming up. But let me tell you this, my friends. If I ever acquired that amount of money, OK, if I ever acquired that kind of money, if I ever become a rich person, I got to tell my friends right now. Um. If somebody attacks you and it's not that bad, because the, the attack that uh, Connor's friend, uh, Artem, I think his name was, the, the attack that Connor's friend went through, 
it wasn't it wasn't like he got his ass whipped out on thing. I think it was just kind of a disrespectful kind of thing to, to, to provoke Connor. I got news for you. If I got Connor money and I know for a fact that I could get my ass sued off because of, of whooping somebody's ass, don't call me to be to be the reason for retribution. I, don't try to use me for retribution. It's just not going to happen, man. You can call me up. Hey, man, these dudes rolled up on me and said some bad stuff. OK, and you're telling me this why? Because if you and not me and you got to get the crew together and go over there and whoop some ass. And in this and in this particular scenario, like I said, in this mind experiment, I'm a rich guy and I'm going to be thinking, let me, let me see. I'm worth a hundred and something million dollars. You're not. If I go and whoop these people's asses, I'm going to get sued by everybody that was around. That's around anybody that walks by the place and hears the sound is going to sue me. Uh, and I'm probably going to be getting in trouble and they're going to be, everybody's going to have uh, soft tissue injuries all of a sudden, you know, somebody that sees it. Oh my goodness. I, I, uh, I, I, I saw the fight and I was so upset that I, 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 I did a face palm. And when I face palm myself, I broke my own nose. Well, essentially I also was assaulted. I have to go through that. Uh, no, you, you're just going to have to take that embarrassment and deal with that yourself, punk. Because if I get sued, I mean, let's be honest, in this particular thought experiment, I'm rich and this person isn't. Um, if you really think about it, your punk ass is always borrowing money from me. So really, technically, this is partially our money. Because if I get sued for $20 million because I beat somebody's ass because you don't know how to take a little bit of humiliation, you know, I mean, I'm going to be out $20 million because your feelings got hurt. Oh, uh, no. And I'm damn sure not going to get 20 of my friends all of a sudden and bring their asses to whoop somebody his ass because what's going to happen everybody's going to get mad oh they're going to double sue my ass hell no hell no i wish a friend of mine would try to call me and try to have me join them whooping somebody's ass because of something that's not that big of a deal i'll answer the phone yo man this dude did some stuff man let's go over to his and whoop his ass and i'll start i'll start doing acts he doesn't live here anymore I know it's you, man. We were just talking. You can't start doing an accent in the middle of a sentence to pretend like you're not there when I was actually talking to you. Well, no, this is not him. He left the phone to me. Not dude. We're, this is a Skype call, bro. I'm looking right at you. No, don't try to put your hand over the screen. That's not helping. <laughs> I'm just telling you right now. Don't call me for that crap. If I was Conor McGregor, there's no hell no. I would my I may I might diss him on social media. I might say something about his mama. I might do some stuff like that. But if you really think about it in the Conor McGregor thing, dude, you have to fight this guy anyway. Why would you go and try to whoop his ass for no money? Right? Because the amount of money that you would have made whooping his ass, if you do whoop his ass, is going to be probably somewhere around the amount of money that you're going to get sued for and lose. So basically, when you do fight this guy and whoop his ass, you're going to be doing it for basically free because the 20 million dollars you might lose in the damn lawsuits that you're going to lose is going to be the amount of money that you're going to get paid to whoop his ass. So basically, either way, you're going to get to you gonna be whooping his ass for nothing. This is going to be a makeup ass whooping, right? You go. This is going to be a digging myself out of a whole ass whooping, right? So I'm just saying, everybody, this this is just me talking to my bastard army. Look, I, I, don't, I don't know if anybody out there is rich. It doesn't really matter if you are, if you're not. That's not the point. Look, I know you love your friends and your family. I love my friends and my family, too. But if they do some shit that's stupid, I'm not getting sued to whoop somebody's ass over that. Well, if they got a little embarrassed by some stuff, you know what I'm going to do? Instead of going to jail and getting sued for $20 million if I was a rich guy, I'm going to sit them down at the bar and tell them, hey, instead of me going over there whooping somebody's ass and losing a lot of money, how about you and I just sit here and talk about this character and strength building of, you know, it's a really a character building and strength building experiments of knowing how to deal with humiliation. Yeah, see, me talking to you and telling you that humiliation isn't really that big of a deal really doesn't cost me much money. <laughs> it only cost me that beer you just took out of my refrigerator without asking first. So just to let you know, I'm not getting sued for your punk ass. I'm not getting 20 of my friends and flying from Ireland to whoop somebody's ass. Hell no, punk. Hell, I'm in New Jersey right now. I wouldn't even drive down to Philly to whoop somebody's ass for your punk ass because it's 
this, your humiliation isn't worth the six bucks in gas and six bucks in tolls, punk. I'd rather just give you five bucks and tell you to go have a hoagie and calm the hell down, jackass. I'm just saying. So I still dig you as a fighter, Conor McGregor, and hopefully you'll figure out that you don't need to be doing this kind of crap. Because even though if if you got a hundred million dollars in the bank, if you don't do anything really dumb as a person, if you got a hundred million dollars, that's enough money for you. That's enough F money for you and several generations of family. That's enough right there. If you don't do anything stupid. But if you do some stupid stuff, if you spend too much, if you start hitting buses with dollies, if you get cut fighters faces, if the UFC sues you, if there's a bunch of fights that get called off, if the facility sues you, if the people that got their knuckle, the person that got his knuckle broken sues you, if the other fighters sue you, if Burger King says, hey, no more, no more eating chicken sandwiches in commercials for us, you bastard, you window breaking bastard. All of a sudden, that hundred million dollars isn't a hundred million dollars anymore, is it? Oh no. All I'm saying is, wise up, my friend. You're a smart dude. You're a smart marketer. Apologize. Pay the people. And never let this crap happen again. That's all I'm saying. That's advice from the S machine to you, Mr. McGregor. And it's also some advice from the S machine. That would be me to my bastard army. Okay. Think before you act, you bastards. Long ass segment over. All right, everybody. I, I was just talking to a friend of mine a little while, like right, right before I started recording this podcast. And I was telling him that I was making fun of some people on Facebook, uh, who were, who were having fights in my Facebook section. And I just, I just literally just posted something innocuous. And if you have a lot of people following you on Facebook or any social media, inevitably somebody will break in to the conversation with something that has nothing to do with what you retweeted or what you posted. And they'll find a snarky way to bring politics in it. And then other people will get into it. And all of a sudden, a post that had nothing to do with politics whatsoever turns into some kind of battle royale in, in the comment section. And then all of a sudden, inevitably, people start calling each other's names and it goes further and further down the rabbit hole. And then come the stupid conspiracy theories. And then you turn your phone on the next morning and it says 700 you know, notif- no- notifies you like, 700. What the hell? And then you notice it's this bunch of people cursing each other out and calling each other snowflakes and libtards and calling each other, you know, scum publicans and they- all this kind of crap. They're calling each other and you're going, really? What the hell does this have to do with beagle puppies? You dumb bastards. I reposted beagle puppies. I said that when I get a dog, it's going to be a beagle because I like beagles and most likely I'll get two beagles because I like beagles and you're down there talking about each other's mom. What the hell is going on with you? How the hell did this turn into a gun control debate and how did this turn into a cons- conspiracy theory free for all underneath my comment, underneath my damn beagle puppy video, you bastards, uh, innocent beagle puppy video that I saw on YouTube that I thought was cute and you dumb bastards are fighting under and you make me sick because I don't like stupid conspiracy theories. I really don't. But then I started thinking about it and I realized not all conspiracy theories are stupid because damn it, I got a conspiracy theory right now. And I'm telling you right now, my friend, it is not stupid. You just aren't learning what you aren't paying attention. If you paid attention and you knew what was really going on, you would realize that what I'm about to tell you right now was the truth. And don't judge me, you bastards. Just bear with me. Hear me out first. And then decide if I'm crazy or you're wrong. Spoiler alert, you're wrong. Now let's go. Now everybody knows I drive the mighty Toyota Camry and I love the mighty Toyota Camry and I take, you know, 
And uh, normally, you know, if it's raining outside, a lot of times you get your car it looks like a bag. Somebody hit it with a bag of dirt and it's all crusty and everything. And when it's a when it's a rainy day or a snowy day, everybody knows everybody has to go to the car wash. And if you go to the car wash, you're in a line of 20 cars and everything's going smoothly, but it still takes a long time because there's 20 cars in front of you. And normally that's a high volume for this particular location, but it doesn't matter. I got to get this crud off the mighty Toyota Camry. Okay. And sometimes I drive by and I see it's, it's like a lot of business. It just, they're just, this place is doing really good. But then there are times when you drive by and there's nobody there. You see the guy standing outside with towels in their hands. Sometimes they're laughing and joking and sometimes they're pissed off because there's no business. But then I started to notice something. I started to notice that whenever they had a whole lot of business, and I'm not talking about snow days, and I'm not talking about rainy days when you get that crud on your car sometimes. I'm talking about just a regular day, you know, when there's no business. Okay, let me put it to you this way. When there's lots of business at this place, my, my if my car is clean, it stays clean and everything's great. But when I drive by and there's no business, I always notice that the next day, right after I drive by and they don't have any business, I walk out of the house and my car is covered in bird crap. And I'm not talking about like, you know, sometimes it's like one blob of bird crap and you're like, nah, this isn't really that big of a deal. You take a, a you take a, a you know, a, a napkin or something, you wipe it up, you roll it up and throw it in the trash. You don't really think much of it or there's a little bit on the windshield. You know, you know, eh, I'll wipe this off. You throw it in the trash. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm talking about full fledged bird crap all over the car. So much so that even if you were in a hurry to go someplace, you can't go to that place. You have no choice but to go to the car wash because there's no place that you can go that's acceptable to show up with your car covered in that much bird crap unless you're going to the I you're going to a everyone has their car covered in bird crap party and I don't think that's a thing at least I hope not so you take your car to the car wash hey hey how you doing hey y'all happy to see it you're happy to see them because you know when they finish doing what you're doing your car is going to be looking great and I didn't think much of it right I drive by and they got a lot of business. Everything's going great. Hey, I wave to them. Hey, what's going on? Hey, they don't really wave back. They give you like a quick wave back because they're busy. Not a problem. I'm glad you're making money. Not a problem. Two days goes by. I drive by the car wash. They're standing outside. There's no business whatsoever. I didn't really think much of it. I wake up the next day. My car is covered in bird crap again. That's two times. <laughs> I laugh it off. What a coincidence. Not a problem. And then it happens seven or eight more times in a row. Wait a second. You're not having any business. And all of a sudden, my car is covered in bird crap. How does this happen seven times? How does this happen seven times? I'm starting to get suspicious. Suspicious. So one day I'm in a, I'm in a gas station across the street from the car wash. I see them. They see me. They, they have no business. Right. I drive over to the get to their to their place to, to vacuum out my car. I don't need my car wash. The car looks good on the outside. I'm just vacuuming. But they have no business. And I see the guy standing out front who normally would be wiping off the car. There's a tree by their place. And I see the guy look up at the tree and point to the tree. And then he takes his other hand and points at me. And I'm trying to figure out what the hell's going on. And then I look over at him and he's still pointing at the tree and pointing at me. And I see a little flash happen. It was a little flash from the tree. And I'm a little confused. What the hell is that? Maybe it's an optical illusion. Maybe some mo some clouds moved around and the sun just, you know, no. I saw another flash. Then I kind of walk closer to the tree and I see a bird sitting there holding an iPhone and he looks like he's taking pictures of my car and there's a bird next to him writing something down and I'm going, what the hell is the bird with a damn iPhone and another bird writing something down and then the birds notice me and turn around really quickly and all of a sudden the iPhone and the notepad are gone and I'm going, what, what was that? And the birds just go, boo -boo, boo -boo, boo -boo, boo -boo. uh huh didn't think much of it because every once in a while you see a bird with an iPhone and another bird next to him with a notepad, but you, you don't really think much of it. You see that all the time. Right? So I drive home. Not a problem. Next day I wake up. What do I see? 
Nothing. There's no bird crap on my car. Oh, I spoke too soon. A couple of big blobs of bird crap hit the windshield. I don't think much of it. It's just the windshield. I'll just, like I said, wipe it up. Not a big deal. Right? So I turn around to close the gates. Okay, and I'm going to get in my car. I'm going to get inside the car, grab a napkin, wipe it up, and throw it in the trash. And as I'm walking towards my car, I hear from the tree, brr, brr. You call, you got to do better than that. Brr, brr. We got to get this money. Brr. Sorry, man. Brr. And I go, what the hell was that? And I see a whole big globs and globs and globs of bird crap hitting my car like rain. What the hell is this? Hey, Oh, goodness gracious, this is disgusting. And I look up at the tree, and it's the same two damn birds that were at the damn frickin' car wash. This time, same bird with the iPhone, but this time he's got the case on. I guess the, guess the case didn't come with the phone when the bird bought the iPhone. I guess he just had to, you know, sometimes you got to order the case separately because they don't have them in the stores. You know, you don't want to wait because sometimes their shipments aren't as fast as you could get a, You know, you can get the case on Amazon. But I digress. And I look up at the trees and I'm like, you mother suckers. And I didn't say suckers. And the bird turns around real quick and throws the iPhone back into his feathers. And the other bird puts the notepad back into his thing. And the, 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 the bird with the, with the, it didn't have the damn iPhone flew off. And I saw something hanging out of his mouth. And I took my phone out real quick and I videoed the bastard. And the other bird said, ha, Android, really? And I said, shut up, bird. You little punk ass. I, I send the cat up to your ass. And I looked at the cat. And I said, cat, get his ass. And as the cat was going up the tree, the bird flew away. And started flying backwards. Pulled his iPhone back out and started recording the cat. And I think he was doing a vlog. Cause he goes, here's a cat trying to, burp, cat trying to get me. Burp, good thing cats can't fly. Burp, I'm going to upload this. And then he flew in another direction. And I was still looking at it, you stinking ass birds. And I got in my car and I'm mad because I now got to take my damn car to the car wash because these crap machines crapped on the mighty Toyota Camry. I zoomed in on the film. And what did I see in the film? Because I filmed the bird that flew away that didn't have the iPhone. You know what the bird had in his mouth? It was a damn work order. A damn work order. It had my name, address, picture. It had a picture of the car. had my license plate. And it said, got him. And he didn't pay in full upon receipt of receipt. Now, you little punk ass. So I drove to the damn car wash. I walk into the damn car wash office. There's the birds right there counting some money and putting the money into his feathers. And I look at the guy in the car wash and he goes, oh, um, hi, Mr. Thomas. I said, shut up, jackass. Listen, punk. And I got into his face. I was right up in his face. And I said, listen, I know you scam now, jackass. I know you scam now. Okay. And if you send any more of them damn iPhone carrying birds and notepad carrying birds to my house, the crap on the mighty Toyota Camry again, I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to take that bird's iPhone and shove it so far up your ass. That by the time the new phone comes out, the, the guy, I, I forgot exactly what I said, but I was pissed off and it did have something to do with me cramming a phone in his ass. He said, I'm so sorry. I said, I, I, I don't want to hear it. Now, I want you to say, I, I will take you off the list. And he pulls his drawer out. And it's a picture of me. And it's like eight checks with the times that he paid the birds the crap on my car. And I said, I want you to terminate that file. And he took the file and he shredded it. And I said, that's right, punk. Your secret's safe with me, but don't let it happen again. Yeah. I know you think I'm crazy, but I'm telling you, this happened exactly as I said it. Oh, come on, S. Anthony. There was no birds with iPhones, and there's no birds that spoke English, and there was no bird flying off where had a work on his, in his mouth because he was getting paid to crap on your car. Well, maybe you just don't know what the real deal is. The truth is out there, man. The truth is out there. You can either believe the truth, or you can be just as uninformed as the rest of you people out there who are getting your cars crapped on, and you don't know why. Why is this bird crapping on my car? I don't get it. I just told you why the bird crapped in your car. You don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe me. Okay. All you got to do is just go to your local uh, car wash and ask him. Just walk up to the guy and say, hey, man, are you one of those car washes that contracts out the pigeons for money to crap on people's cars? Okay, maybe you shouldn't do that because you, you will then get arrested and put into a mental institution. But I'm telling you, that's exactly what happens. <sighs> Why, why, why are you guys all looking at your phones funny? You, 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 
You're just why are y'all looking at the phone like that? You're looking at your phones at, at, at the and look. I don't like the way you're looking at the logo for this podcast. Like, like I'm crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm I, I'm just trying to help you people out. Believe what you want. Bastards. <laughs> Segment over. All right, everybody. This has been episode number 314 of the Yes, Anthony Says podcast. I want to thank you guys very, very much for everything. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it more than you will ever, ever know. Uh, we will see you next week, but I just want to let you know because I know there's some new people listening. This podcast is everywhere. It is on Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, Spreaker, Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and the home base is Podbean. Uh, I am using my YouTube channel now, so go to YouTube forward slash S Anthony says and and uh, follow that. Subscribe to that channel. OK, or if, if you can't remember that, just go to YouTube and look up S Anthony says, bam, there's the channel. You will see a picture of yours truly. Please subscribe to that. I am on Instagram. All you got to do is look up my name S Anthony Thomas. Bam. I'm right there. I'm on Twitter in two places. For me specifically, the Twitter is at S. Anthony Thomas. For this show, the Twitter is at S. Anthony Says. And you can go to the verified page for this show on uh, on Facebook. All you got to do is go to Facebook, because I'm sure you're on Facebook, because the rest of the planet is. Go into the search box up top and look up S. Anthony Says. You will see the page for this show, and it has a blue verified check mark. And that will let you know that it is a verified page. It is, in fact, me. Once again, the email for the show is talk to us Anthony at gmail.com. T A L K T O S A N T H O N Y at gmail.com. Much love to every last one of the bastard army everywhere. United States, Canada, Australia, UK. Uh, there's other places as well. I didn't forget about you, but you know, the show's already over 45 minutes and I try to try to keep it around that length. You bastards. <laughs> To all the Bastard Army everywhere, thank you for everything. I will see you next week with episode number 315. Much love to you all. Much love to you all. And I'm going to say goodbye to you the way I always say goodbye. I'm going to do it on the count of three, and I want you to do it with me. Are you ready? Of course you're ready. Here we go. One, two, three. S. Anthony. Out.